Are you wondering how you can create a nautical themed logo in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years, and in this Envato Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use, as I show you step by step how you can create this simple logo using Adobe Illustrator. To complete your design, you'll need this photo from Envato Elements, so make sure to check out Envato Elements, where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu. Set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl A0 to zoom on your entire artboard. Go to Window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Don't forget to also open the character panel. And when you're done, go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Go again to view, but this time to snap to grid, which will enable the snap to grid feature. And for this tutorial, you need a grid line every five pixels. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides in grid. Just enter five in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes. And let's start by creating the background. Select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Simply click on your artboard to create an 860 pixel square. Click OK to create this new shape. Move to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard. And then just click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Continue in the appearance panel. Select the stroke and remove the color, select the fill and replace the color with 43, 59 and 84. And now move to the layers panel and lock this shape to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident. Make sure that your fill is still active and replace it with white. Click again on your artboard and this time create a 15 by 10 pixel shape. Press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on this new shape. Switch to the Direct Selection tool. Select this point. Hold down the Shift key and click this point to add it to your selection. And now click and drag to move these two points 10 pixels to the right, like this. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the Info panel to know exactly when you get to 10 pixels. Now select this entire shape and go to Effect stylize and round corners, set the radius to 5 pixels, click OK to apply this effect, make sure that this shape remains selected, and move to the brushes panel to save it as a pattern brush. First of all, you can open the flyer menu and go to select all unused, click this button to remove all your unused brushes, and now click this button to save your selected shape as a pattern brush. Keep the settings as they come. Click OK to add your shape as a pattern brush. Now you can press the delete key to remove this shape. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. And let's continue with the ellipse tool. Again, click on your artboard to create a 320 pixel circle. Click again these two buttons to easily center this shape. Focus on the appearance panel and you can press Shift and X to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and just apply your pattern brush from the brushes panel. Having the ellipse tool still active, let's use it to create a few more circles. Click again on your artboard and start with a 300 pixel circle. Increase the stroke weight to 5 points and don't forget to align it to inside using this button. Center this shape and then click again on your artboard to create a 280 pixel circle. Center it and increase the stroke weight to 30 points. 
click again on your artboard and this time create a 240 pixel circle remember that you can press shift and x to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings select the fill and replace the white with a color that will make your shape stand out let's make it blue don't forget to center this shape and let's continue with the type on a path tool now before you add any text let's focus on the character panel to set the settings for the text that you're about to add select the rockwell extra bold font set the size to 15 and the tracking to 500 and now you can focus on your blue circle click on the edge of this shape and type in nautical services press the escape key when you're done typing switch to the direct selection tool and use this bracket to move your text somewhere around this position now reselect the ellipse tool from your toolbar this time use it to create a 260 pixel circle let's fill it again with this blue center it and return to the type on a path tool let's quickly increase the font size to 16 points click again on the edge of this blue circle and this time type in international press the escape key when you're done and use again the direct selection tool to adjust your text this time drag this bracket inside the circle to easily move your text inside the shape let's place it somewhat like this when you're done move to the layers panel and hold down the shift key to select both pieces of text press ctrl and g to group this text and we'll use these two pieces of text to mask the shape that lies behind it so select this group along with this ellipse move to the transparency panel and first of all click this make mask button and then make sure to uncheck this clip box now that this mask is applied let's continue with the ellipse tool and use it to create a 210 pixel circle again center it and don't forget to lower the stroke width to five points press ctrl and plus to zoom in on this new shape continue with the rectangle tool and use it to create an 80 pixel circle again center this shape and press shift and x to swap the fill and stroke color settings now switch to the direct selection tool and go to object path and add anchor points which will add another four anchor points for your shape and you'll need to drag these new anchor points 25 pixels towards the center of this shape let's start with this one remember that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 25 pixels and that you can also hold down the shift key to constrain the movement of your selected point let's continue with this one and drag it 25 pixels up like this and finally select this one and drag it 25 pixels to the right like this reselect the rectangle tool and this time use it to create a 150 pixel square center this new shape and go again to object path and add anchor points and for this shape you'll need to select each corner point and drag it 60 pixels towards the center of this shape let's start with this one remember to hold down the shift key and go 60 pixels to the left and 60 pixels down like this continue with this one and go 60 pixels up and 60 pixels to the left for this one go 60 pixels up and 60 pixels right and for this one go 60 pixels down and 60 pixels to the right when you're done select this entire shape press ctrl c and then ctrl f to add a copy in front let's select this copy along with your smaller star shape and press this minus front button from the pathfinder panel now reselect the remaining larger star shape press shift and x to swap the fill and stroke color settings select the stroke and first of all increase the weight to five points and then align it to inside continue with the pen tool from your toolbar 
and use it to create a simple triangle shape. Start from this point, go up and add the second point, move to this point and add the third one, and then click again the starting point to close your path. Press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Make sure that the entire path is selected and go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Make sure that you're checking this bottom right reference point. Set the angle to 90 degrees and increase the number of copies to 3. Click OK to apply this effect. Reselect the rectangle tool and use it to create a 10 pixel square. Let's use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. Press Ctrl M plus to zoom in a bit more. Now use the direct selection tool to select these two points. Go to object, path and average. Check this both box and click OK, which will turn your square into a triangle. Now let's switch back to the selection tool. Hold down the Alt key and simply click and drag this triangle to add a copy. Also hold down the Shift key to constrain the movement of this copy. Place it in this location. Rotate it like this. Hold down the Shift key to select this triangle along with the first one. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add copies in front. And then rotate these copies like this. Now you need to select your entire design. Press Ctrl and G to group all of these shapes. And continue with the rectangle tool. Use it to create a 90 by 50 pixels shape. Move this rectangle in this exact location. Replace the white with black. Switch to the direct selection tool and use it to select just this point. Drag it 10 pixels up and then select this point and drag it 10 pixels down. Now select this entire shape and hold down the R key to drag a copy to the left in this exact position. Use the selection tool to rotate this copy like this. Make sure that you have this shape still selected and go to Effect, Warp and Fish. Check this horizontal box and set the bend to only 5%. Click OK to apply the effect. Move to this other shape and go again to Effect, Warp and Fish. This time set the bend to minus 5%. Click OK to apply this effect. And now that you've got these two black shapes, let's use them to mask the logo. Hold down the Shift key to select both of your black shapes. Press Ctrl and G to group them. Now hold down the Shift key to select this new group along with the logo group. Move to the transparency panel and click again this make mask button. And don't forget to uncheck this clip box. Now reselect the rectangle tool and use it to create a new 90 by 50 pixel shape. Fill it with white and let's move it in this exact location. Go to Object, Path, and Add Anchor Points. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and use it to select just this point and drag it 20 pixels to the left, like this. Select this entire shape, hold down the R key and drag a copy to the left in this exact position. Let's rotate it like this. Keep it selected and go to Effect, Warp, and Fish. Again, check this horizontal box and set the bend to 5%. Click OK. Move to this other shape and apply a fish effect. Just set the bend to minus 5% and click OK to apply the effect. And let's continue with the type tool. First of all, focus on the character panel to select the Pacifico font. Set the size to 20 and keep the tracking set to 500. Click on your artboard to type in 19. Press the escape key and move this text in this location. Hold down the R key and drag a copy to the right in this position. Double click this new text and replace it with 38. Again press the escape key to switch back to the selection tool. And we'll use these two pieces of text to mask the shapes that lie behind them.
So remember to hold down the shift key to select this text along with this shape. Click this make mask button and uncheck the clip box. Let's repeat the same technique for these two shapes. And now you can press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. For the final touch, we'll use this photo from Envato Elements as a background for the logo. So let's download it and drag it inside your Illustrator document. Keep it selected and first of all drag it in the bottom of the Layers panel. Move to the Control panel and lower the height to 850 pixels. Click these two buttons to easily center your photo. Lock the photo and unlock the square. Select it and focus on the appearance panel. Select this fill, lower the opacity to 50% and change the blending mode to color. And then click this button to add a second fill for your shape. Keep it selected and replace this color with 39, 170 and 225. Lower the opacity of the second field to 50% and change the blending mode to soft light. And with this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.